Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I want to show you how to join your mitered squares as you go. This massively speeds up any mitered square project that you're making because you're actually joining the squares together as you're knitting them and it saves you time in having to store squares everywhere and then sew them together afterwards. And I also find that it gives you a nice firm join because you're actually knitting them together rather than just sewing them together afterwards. So there's three main squares when you're working in a join as you go that you need to know. You need to know how to join a square to the right hand edge of a base square. You need to know how to join a square to the top edge of your base square and then you need to know your infill squares which is where you join a bottom edge and a right hand edge and knit it all together. Um, this means that your mitres will all go in the same direction so you want to avoid joining squares to a left edge and a bottom edge. You want to always make sure that it's to a right edge and a bottom edge so that your mitre flows. I'm not going to show you how to knit the actual mitre square. I have a separate video for that, so I will link that up in the top here for you to take a look at. But I will show you how to work all three types of joining square. And once you know those, you can make a whole blanket because it's a variation of these three types of squares that you would use. So for this project, you will need yarn. You're going to need your knitting needles of choice. I like to use circular needles, but you can use straight needles if you want, it doesn't matter. You're going to need some scissors and an embroidery needle for sorting out those ends. So without further ado, let's get going. So I'm going to show you how to join the squares as you go in the order that I would normally join them. I like to join first to the right hand side edge and build one there. Then I join onto the top edge build one there and then I knit a square that fills in the gap and essentially that's how you would build your squares all the way along your blanket working in diagonal strips because you can't really build one here and here and then join one on there because you want your mitre to be going in the same direction all the time so it's really easy once you've got your cast on edge sorted then you knit the square as you normally would. So I'm not going to show you how to knit the whole square. I'm just going to show you the joining process in the first couple of rows. So I've got my contrasting colour yarn. And this particular square is 20 stitches by 20 stitches. So when I made it, I cast on 40 stitches. So we want to do the same again for when we're joining our square. So when we are joining to the right hand side edge, we want to first of all cast on... 19 stitches onto our needles. As I've said before, I use long tail cast on, but you can use whichever method you like. So I've cast on 19 stitches, I'm just going to pull the tail out of the way and then I'm going to get my square and I'm going to work into this bottom right hand corner to start with. Now common sense would tell you that you cast on 20 stitches and pick up 20 stitches. In practice by casting on one less and picking up one more from your square you get a beautifully straight edge where you normally would have a little bump if you cast on an equal amount of stitches and pick up an equal amount of stitches. So you cast on one fewer than you are going to pick up. So I'm going to pick up 21 stitches and the, bar the places we are picking up the stitches are not these bumps here. We want to pick up the bar that is in between a stitch. And the first one I go for is often hidden. So it's right down in this bottom corner here. And I'm going to pop my needle in under two bars, not one, because this corner can end up being a little bit gapy. So with, so with your working yarn, not your tail, pull the tail out of the way, we're now going to pick up 21 stitches. And you pick them up by literally pulling a loop through the bar. So that's one. two,
Right, so here we are going to get stitch number 20. And then right from the very top corner, we want to pull one more for stitch number 21. And then you should have the same number of stitches cast on as you did where um, for your original square so if you cast on 40 for your original square you should now have 40 stitches picked up so you treat this row of stitches that you've just picked up as your cast on row so once you've picked up all of your 40 stitches you would turn your work and then you'll just knit all the way along just like you would for your first row the picked up stitches can be a little bit tight so you might have to fight a little bit to get them um, knitted. It depends on how tightly you picked them up. But I find that having quite tight pick-up stitches actually works in your favour because you get a neater edge on the join. If you like to work with a stitch marker, you would knit your 20, pop your stitch marker on and then knit your second 20, just like you would um, when you're knitting your mitre square. So there you can see we've got a pretty seamless join and you would then carry on and work your square all the way to the end and um, which I'll go away and do and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done and I'll then show you how to join this top edge which is virtually the same with a couple of tweaks. So I finished my red square that I added onto the side and you can see that the edge because we picked up one more stitch than we cast on is beautifully straight. There's no dip where we've added the square on. And now we're going to add a square along the top edge here. So whereas with this red square, we cast on first and then picked up stitches, with the top edge, we are going to pick up stitches and then cast on some stitches. So the same premise applies. We want to pick up one more stitch than we cast on. So we want to pick up one more stitch than halfway so in my case half would be 20 i want to pick up one more so i'm going to pick up 21 stitches from this edge again we're picking up these little bars starting right in this corner here and you're going to want to pick up two stitches quite close together so I like to go and pick up my first stitch where I worked my last red stitch, which can be quite tight. So this one is number 20. And then what you want to do is you want to pick up another final stitch right from where this little nub is, where your slip knot was when you started your cast on for the blue square. So it can be quite tight and it can be a little bit tough to pick up the stitch. But there. So now that we've cast on 21 stitches across our top edge, you want to turn your work and then we want to cast on 19 more stitches. You can use either the cable cast on or the knitted cast on. I'm going to show you the knitted cast on today because it is the easier of the two. So you literally just knit your stitch, pull the loop up, 
put your other loop round to pick up the back leg of that loop and pop it onto your needle and pull to tighten. So that's 19 stitches cast on in addition to the 21 we picked up so that should be 40. Now because we turned our work around when we started our knitted cast on we don't actually need to turn our work again before we start knitting. So again you treat this row as your cast on row if you're making a base square and then you just want to knit to this first row and if you like to use a stitch marker for your squares then you would pop a stitch marker after 20 stitches so that you know on your next row where to put your decreases. Don't worry about this last stitch being really loose because when you sew your ends in, you can tighten that all up. Then you will turn your work and you can see that we have already the forms of a really nice join. And then you would carry on knitting your mitered square as per your base square because all the, diff the only difference is the way that we pick up the stitches to make sure that it's attached um to the square below when we're working so we don't have to join it separately later so i'll go away and knit the rest of this square and so you can see what it looks like when it's done and then i'll talk you through how we join a square that needs to be joined on both the bottom side and the right side so i finished the pink square and you can see how nice the edge is i twisted my stitch there that would normally be neater um but you can see we've got a nice L shape now of our squares and the last type of square that you would need to join if you're making a blanket like this is the two sided join. Always it would be a bottom and a right hand side because you want your mitre working up in the same direction. So we're going to pick up 20 stitches along here and 20 stitches along here and we're going to start in this bottom corner of the L shape that the squares have formed. So the first one you want to pick up should be right in the corner. So that first stitch can be quite tight. And then the last stitch, you work into here, where the loops picked up the blue. 
So that's 20 stitches picked up evenly across your square. And then you do the same for the pink square. And then the last stitch, you just want to work right into the very end of the previous square. I'll try and go through a couple of loops on this one. Because it's the last stitch, it has a habit of loosening if you haven't sewed your ends in when you're joining. There. So we've got 40 stitches picked up evenly and you treat this as your cast on row. Then you'll turn your work and carry on and knit all the way across, placing your stitch marker after stitch 20 if you like to use a stitch marker. And then you'll find that they come perfectly together as you carry on knitting your mitre square. So I'll go away and finish this off so you can see how it starts to look. Again, don't worry if this stitch is loose because um, it will tighten up as you sew your ends in. So there you can already see we have our nice picked up stitches. We have it nicely joined and tight in this join here. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to finish off this square and then I'll show you what the finished item looks like. So I finished off the grey square that I was knitting a little while ago and you can see that it's infilled that edge nicely. You can also see that it's self-blocked so it's straightened out these squares that we joined earlier really nicely as well and you get a really nice neat edge and your mitre flows from one square to another so that when you are have a whole blanket your joins are going to go all the way lovely diagonal up your project. So they, those are the three squares that you need to know for join as you go mitre squares. You just work a combination of those different types all the way until you've finished your blanket. Hopefully that will speed things up a lot for you when you're knitting your mitered squares. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you found it handy and I hope that you're going to go away and knit loads of lovely mitered square stash busting blankets. And I'll see you again for another tutorial soon. Take care. Bye.